What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Medica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we ended up getting Reaper enchantment, and we got ourselves a Shulker Mob Soul. That was pretty awesome. But we never got ourselves a way to use that Mob Soul, and since last episode, I've kind of gone around and collected a couple more um, other souls. So we have a Chicken Soul, a Jacob Ram Soul, I guess, a uh, Jersey Cow. We got a Pig. Uh, I was trying to get myself a regular vanilla cow, but I wasn't able to get one of those. Uh, we got a squid soul, which uh, probably not that useful since we have the dice seeds. But uh, I kind of wanted to have some extra souls around before we commit to using the shulker one, just to make sure everything's going to work how we think it's going to work for testing purposes. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, we can put all these souls away now that we've done that, but we have to go collect a uh, stabilized mob spawner. Now, I don't think we've got one of those at all yeah we have not received one of those i was just making sure we never got one of those as a reward <laughs> from uh our questing or whatever so yeah we need to go find a mob spawner click a draconic core onto it which should stabilize it and then we can mine it and bring it back that's the idea so we can go to the nether and uh get some blaze spawners or we could go have some fun uh and check out like one of these pyramids we haven't done these dungeons yet and to be honest, by this point, it's probably not even really a dungeon for us, but uh, it does have mob spawners. I remember when we flew by the pyramid previously, um, yeah, we heard like spiders in there and I think we might have poked in a little bit and seen like a cave spider or something, but I want to go over there, take a look at that dungeon, uh, maybe collect a few spawners. Yeah, that's definitely what I want to do. Uh, so it's just a quick little flight over in this general direction for us to get to that pyramid. Um, yeah, I don't really foresee us having any problem, especially since we have the uh, saturation buff. So we're always regening hell. Oh, that was a greywood tree. <laughs> it was a oh, bunch of, wow, all the vanilla animals are over here. I was looking for all these guys before. Oh, well, <laughs> Anyway, so let's get over to how far, where am I? Did, I? did I go off course here? Follow. Oh, I need to go north. I did kind of go off course a little bit. All right, so it's to the north, and we can get ourselves a, a dungeon. Yeah, so I'm expecting to have quite a few mob spawners in there. I really didn't want to... I really didn't want to go to the nether and destroy all the blaze spawners. Now, we got a couple options here. We could bane mine the outside of this thing and like open it up or we could just go inside. I think we're just going to head inside and kind of see what's up in here. I do want to swap off my Reaper sword to this one so we can do a little bit more damage, I think. Uh, oh, spiders. Ooh, okay. So this goes up. Yeah, we never really went into these before, so I'm not really sure what to expect other than obviously mob spawners and stuff. Uh, so it's just a maze is what it looks like. That's amazing. Uh, okay. Can I like, that takes us right back to the start. Goodness. Oh yeah. Here's a spawner right here. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and light this up a little bit. Yeah. Cave spider right there. Cave spider right here. You're dead. And you're dead. Okay, so let us try and stabilize these mob spawners and see what's up. So right click. Yeah, so you right click on it and then you get the mob spawner. It looks like it contained the same thing. So these are cave spider ones. Yeah, that one's saved as well. Okay, okay. Uh, more spawners this way. So we get a zom oh two zombies. All right, we can do that one and then that one. Okay, well that takes care of all of our uh, draconic cores that we had. Uh, I kind of want to vein mine this a little bit and see what's here. Maybe we'll go outside and vein mine the outside of it. Just kind of see what it looks like. It will just do like one corner, not completely ruin the entire thing. Oh, so you vein mine and then it opens it up into this. Man, there's a lot of solid structure here. Okay, so this isn't quite what I was thinking this was going to be. Huh. All right. Well, let's get rid of the sandstone. Don't really need that. Don't need the stairs. Um, I am kind of curious, though, in this thing, like, if there's any loot. There's got to be loot, right? What else would be the purpose of this? 
But where the loot is in these things, I have no idea. Oh my goodness, it's such a maze. I feel like I should just vein mine the entire thing away <laughs> and kind of see what we're left with. I think I might do that. All right, guys. So after vein mining most of this away, we're left with some interesting things here. So there's obsidian right in the center. I'm not entirely sure why. That looks like a staircase that might go down into something further down below. Uh, there's a few more spawners around here, and there are, in fact, a few chests, as I expected. Um... So I don't know if there's going to be any loot worth grabbing, but let's just kind of pop around here and take a look at these chests and see if there's anything interesting. So a bunch of like books, some gold, an emerald, mm, nothing too fantastic. It's a lot of dungeon crawling and a lot of maze for nothing really, huh? That kind of sucks. So I am curious where this goes down here. Oh, so maybe this is like... Is this like the main part? What, what is this? Interesting. So there's like a... I want to say a nether portal thing, but that's not really a nether portal, is it? Okay, well... Yeah, not a lot here, surprisingly. Uh, pretty disappointed by this, to be really honest, because I was expecting this thing to have a lot of good stuff in it, but... Okay, well, I mean, we have a spot to go get ourselves some more spawners. There's at least four more, probably a little bit more than that. So, when we need more spawners in the future, we'll come back here for that. Alright guys, so we need a spot to place these spawners, and I'm thinking we're going to repurpose this area here. This was where we were farming up a whole bunch of monsters for the different armor drops and so on. I really don't think we need this in particular anymore. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get rid of all of the cursed earth here. Yeah, we don't need this anymore. Cool. All right. So we got all that back. Uh, we have plenty of drops of evil. Oops, if I put my finger on the right keys. We have plenty of drops of evil. If we ever want to make it back, we can do that. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to make this one block lower. So we'll get rid of these torches here. And then we'll place... I guess I'm going to need just a little bit more quartz block. Uh, blocks of quartz. Uh, yeah, this stuff here. We're going to place this and make the floor one lower here. So we have the correct sizing. When do all this... And then this room is bigger than a normal spawning room. This is, I think this was 13 by 13. Uh, what is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I'm going to say this is 13 by 13. So we can put a few spawners in here and get maximum range out of those, which is going to be really nice. I think I should be able to just do that. Okay, so there's our floor. And yeah, that's fine being like that. So the center of the room... Should be this block here. And then uh, I guess we want one block higher. We're going to place this here. And then that's probably going to spawn in cave spiders. <laughs> Actually, it might not. I think it might be uh, illuminated enough in here where it won't spawn. Um, but I guess that's also going to take care of it for us as well. Okay. So put a torch here to prevent any further spawning. So what we should be able to do is swap out the mob soul in there with any other soul that we have. And then our grinder over here should be able to grind it for us. Um, so let's take a look at the different souls. The one that we really want is the shulker soul, but we're going to hold off on that for a little bit. I think let's put in maybe chicken soul and then I'll farm up some extra chickens in case we need this later. But just to test this out. So I'm going to put in the chicken. All right, so that should spawn in chickens. And I can't remember if those need grass to spawn or if those just spawn regardless. I don't think light level matters for those guys, but it might need grass nearby. Let's try. Yeah, okay, so it needs grass in order to spawn. All right, so that's something that we know. Um, so what we want to do is increase this speed. Does it show... It doesn't really... I think it used to give you information when you're looking at this thing, like either a heads-up display or something like that.
But if I remember correctly, you could put the different cores on there to increase mob spawning speed. And then there's a few other things you could do. Like if you put a star on there, it did something. Mm, doesn't look like I can put a star. Maybe I have to upgrade it to the different tiers before we can do anything. I'll probably have to go and look at the the tablet. Do we did we ever make a draconic tablet? Maybe it says all the information we need in here. All right, so it looks like the stabilized mob spawners have changed since the last time I have used these, which come to think of it, I think the last time I used these was like Project Ozone 2, maybe? Anyway, um, so yeah, you put the draconic core on the spawner and then you get this one, but it looks like you can craft these with broken spawners. I'm not sure if we can collect the stabilized mob spawner and then craft that just the same or how this all works but yeah apparently uh all you gotta do is just put the different core on here so the basic which we have spawns up to four mobs at a time with a delay of 10 to 40 seconds between spawns it requires the player to be within 24 blocks to function and mobs will only spawn if the requirements are met grass for cows pigs etc darkness for monsters so wyvern spawns mobs between 5 and 20 seconds um does not require a player nearby. So that'll just spawn all the time pretty quickly, and we don't have to be standing next to it. Draconic spawns between 2.5 and 10 seconds, uh, eight mobs at a time, does not require a player nearby, and ignores the spawn requirements. So Draconic seems like where we want to be, and then Chaotic, eventually, when we get to that point, 1.25 and 5 seconds between up to 12 mobs at a time. Um... Warning, things may get a little chaotic if you choose to use a spawner. If you have Ender.io installed, you can create stabilized spawners by crafting a core with Ender.io broken spawners. Yeah, I didn't know about this before. Otherwise, we would have just done this initially because we have broken spawners. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Okay, so uh, Awakened Core. I think that's what we want to do. So you can just swap out the cores, it looks like. So that's going to ignore the requirement for us to have grass, I do believe. Okay. So we will want to move this thing down one block. So that's a thing that we're going to have to do. But yeah, that seems to be spawning a decent amount of mobs at, all at once. So that's pretty good. So I wonder how this is going to work for shulkers. Uh, we want to make sure that thing's moved down so when the shulkers spawn, it will get all of them. Because right now, the chickens are standing underneath where the uh, working area is, I do believe. Yeah, so we need to move that down one block. Um, I don't know if redstone works with this by default. Hopefully it does, so we can turn this on and off. Yep, looks like it is. it works with the redstone signal right away, so that's awesome. All right, so let's turn this off. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to get rid of these chickens. Well, actually, what I really want to do is make sure we get another mob soul so we don't have to worry about that later. So let me go ahead and do a few things off camera here, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So now the real test is going to be um, putting the shulker in there and how this is going to work because I know the shulkers can teleport, and if they teleport out of here and they get all over the base, that is just not going to work, right? So I want to see how this is going to work with them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I was able to get a chicken soul pretty quickly there, but then I decided I was going to try and get another one. And it took me quite some time to get that second chicken soul. Enough time, in fact, for us to get two of these chicken trophies. <laughs> so if that's any indication of how slow it is to get those uh, with just the uh, Reaper 5 enchantment, if we were to get ourselves the Staff of Power, I think that already gives you a 5%. With the Reaper Fire, that'd be like a 10% chance or something like that. It's definitely a boost either way. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and put the Shulker in there. Let's spell Shulker right, and then we'll put it in there. <laughs> All right, so let's do that. So yeah, we can spawn in Shulkers, but yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Let's first of all turn this thing on so it's always active. We are good to go. So if we just spawn these guys in, we should... Oh, that's a problem. Yep, okay, okay. We gotta turn this off. Oh, what am I doing? This needs to be always active. 
Uh, yeah, these guys are teleporting around, so this is not gonna work correctly. Ah. Uh, now, I'm not sure what the best way to handle this is gonna be. So some of them are spawning, like, up here at the roof level, so we could put another one of these mob crushers up here, and hopefully it'll kill them before they can warp away, but I don't know if they're, like, avoiding the mob crusher. Um... So yeah, we need to take care of this. Uh, oh man, they are teleporting all over. Oh boy. Okay, well, yeah, I got a little bit of figuring out <laughs> to do here to, to understand what we have to do to fix this problem. So yeah, let me go ahead and clean up this mess, play around with this for a little bit, and we'll revisit this here in a moment. All right, guys, so it looks like we got the problem solved. The uh, shulkers are teleporting, but there is an ender tether, which draws monsters back to it that are trying to teleport away. Generally, that item is used for endermen. And I just tried it, and sure enough, it seems to work for the shulkers. Now, the reason why they're getting all over the place is because they're teleporting. When they teleport, this item right here draws them right back to it. So if we turn off the grinder here for a moment, um... Active without a redstone signal, I think. Yeah, okay, so let's turn <laughs> sounds down. Hostile creatures down to 7%, okay. So every time they try and warp away, it's drawing it right to that tether. Yeah, this gets a little crazy. We'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Okay, so every, every single monster that's trying to teleport away is being drawn right here. These guys will end up, like, attacking each other. Or at least I had them attacking each other before. And then they'll just end up killing each other. Um, looks like those two are in a fight right there. But anyway, I know this is silly. So we can just put that always active. And this thing will just kill the mob. But yeah, any guys that try and teleport away just get put directly underneath the mob spawner right now. Which is fantastic. That keeps them from getting all over the base. And they die and do exactly what we, what we want them to. Now, as you can see here, I can use time in a bottle on this thing to speed up the spawner, which is pretty cool. Not sure, like, how much we're going to be doing that at all, but I thought that was kind of interesting that we are able to do that. Um, so, yeah. I've been letting this run now for a little while as I've been testing. So, we have 1,100 shulker shells. I think we're kind of okay at the moment. Um, you know, I had the lever on the side. I think we're going to move this lever... I can never break that. I think we're going to move the lever right on top of this guy. Whoops, I just shot myself. Yeah, we'll uh, put that right on top of that. And when we need to spawn in more of these shulkers in the future, we can uh, do that and speed this up. And as we saw, we can swap out the core. So I can get that awakened core back if I wanted to with the draconic core, I believe. I haven't tried swapping this. Yeah, so you can swap these back and forth freely. All right, Bo, get out of there. Swap them back and forth freely, so if we need this awakened core for something, we can get that back. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, shulker problem has been taken care of. Let's change the music and sounds back so I don't accidentally get creepered or something a little bit later. Yeah, so that's a kind of a cool thing. I like the ender tether, how that works with the shulkers. I didn't know that worked with anything besides endermen before. Now I know. So yeah. Uh, so the next step is, if we are trying to make a few more of the wyvern cores, let's try and do this again. I want to make, was it, 32 of these things? So we need blaze rods so we can get another spawner. Looks like we're missing a little draconium, so we can take care of that uh, with the draconium ore. I'm curious, though, is there Draconi... draconium seeds? There are. So the draconium essence turned into the draconium ingots and then we could macerate those down into dust or whatever but i think we need the draconium ingots for this right let me do this one more time so it says that we are running low on the dr draconium dust and it needs that to turn into the ingots i think somewhere in here maybe the draconium block so it might be worth it for us to just go ahead and make the draconium seeds what do those cost this is a tier five seed so we need another star, some supremium, some kind of tier four essence, and a tier five crafting seed with a mineralist thing. Okay, let me go ahead and get these set up. I'm gonna bring them over to uh, the end and we'll start collecting draconium. 
All right, guys. So I went to the nether and I farmed up a blaze soul. So we now have a blaze soul, or I guess a blaze spawner in there. Uh, yeah, we have the redstone signals turned on so they're not spawning anything. And I have farmed up a lot of blaze rods at this point. So we have plenty of those. So the next thing that I'd like to do is be able to finish automating our wyvern cores. So if we look at wyvern cores one more time, we try and make 32 of these guys. We have everything except for these two, which have to be made with the actually additions laser. So I want to automate that process. So our lasers right here, we've been using this manually with a button ever since uh, we first made this thing, however long ago that was. It is now time for us to go ahead and automate this. So what we're going to do, let's move this over here. I think we'll use this space right here. We haven't really used this for anything. And I think this will be just fine for doing what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll come up. I don't know, maybe that many blocks. That should be fine. Well, actually, no, let's, let's do this a different way. I'm going to put the laser in the ground. Let's do that. So laser will go in the ground like so. Okay. And then we can put a pressure plate on there. And when this receives a redstone signal, it should laser. Now I can't remember. It says redstone mode pulse. I can't remember if you put a redstone signal, if it keeps pulsing over and over, or if it only does it the one time, because if it only does it once, then that might not work. So let's do that. Okay. Well, <laughs> I got to fix those blocks, but is that going to keep going or does? Yeah. So that only happens once. All right. So that might not be the best way. Yeah, that might not be the best way. Okay, so let's try again here. Uh, if this thing hits quartz, it turns it into <laughs> uh, a different type of block. Yeah, we definitely don't want that to happen. So I'll replace this. Um, so really what I want to have happen, I want to have this laser pointing somewhere, uh, probably down here in a three by three. So let's replace these blocks down here with this core so it doesn't replace these. Okay, we'll just fill this all in like so. Yeah, we'll have a pressure plate right here. Can we make a gold pressure plate? That'd probably be the most ideal way of doing this. Okay, and then we just need to place this guy somewhere. Let's put it right here facing downwards. Okay, that should be just fine. So that's going to laser whatever this pressure plate has on it. So now we need to take this pressure plate link this to some kind of a thing which pulses redstone. And as long as this pressure plate is depressed, we will pulse redstone like every five seconds or something like that until there's nothing left on this pressure plate. Now the items that the laser generates, we will have something uh, pull like a item collector or whatever. And when all of the items have been collected, the pressure plate should come back up, which will stop this thing from pulsing and stop it from firing. So I need to figure out some kind of a item in here. Probably RF tools has something where it will just pulse every now and then. I don't want it to do quick pulses, but I do want it to pulse. So I guess I'll go through here, try and find something that'll work. And then we will get this all hooked up. All right, guys. So I kind of changed this around a little bit and I think this is going to work pretty well. So we have our atomic reconstructor here set to redstone mode pulse like it was before. So when it gets a redstone signal, it'll emit the beam. Okay. We have a pressure plate sitting on top of a basic redstone interface. So when the pressure plate gets a redstone signal, we can send that redstone signal somewhere based on where we set it. So I'm going to do a shift right click on here to link it to our tool. Yep. Uh, I think, no, I guess it doesn't say, but it's glows to show that it's got that block connected. Um, surrounding this, we have some chisel and bits blocks to keep the items from jumping around. So the laser also, when it hits this pressure plate, stops in this one block. It won't go any further than that. Yeah, so that's another benefit of doing it this way. Um, on the atomic reconstructor, we have redstone energy conduits on all four sides. And on the back of it, we have the, uh, the wireless thing. So that's where all the power is coming from, the uh, flux network thing. Yeah, all four of these are touching that. We got another connection on the bottom. We can go see that below. Yeah, so our flux network is right on the back providing power. And then we got redstone conduit touching four more sides. So hopefully this thing will gain power quite quickly. Anyway, 
So when this thing gets a redstone signal, we want to give a redstone signal to this redstone dust here. So you can see there's a little beam that shows you, yep, that's where you are connected to. So this is going to get a redstone signal, uh, which is going to turn off this redstone torch. Now, the reason why we uh, have a redstone torch here is because we want the timer from RF tools here to be delayed when it gets a redstone signal. Yep. Uh, so when this gets a redstone signal, this uh, torch goes away. So we start emitting a redstone pulse every 40 ticks, every two seconds. And then that's going to emit a redstone signal into here, which we can grab. And then we want to put this to the atomic reconstructor right here. Do I have to do a shift right click? Maybe. So is that good? Can we see? Yeah, it looks like we have a line going to that block. So we should be good. So essentially what should happen if we come up here and take a look. Oh yeah, I also got chiseled blocks up here. So it might make it a little bit more difficult to see. But essentially what should happen, as soon as an item goes onto that pressure plate, that torch should turn off. And then our timer should start putting a redstone signal over here. So as soon as there's something on the pressure plate, after two seconds, we should start seeing uh, the laser firing. So let's try putting something on there. I can get it in there. There we go. And that should continue to go every two seconds. But it didn't. Uh, why not? Oh, is the pressure plate overriding the timer? I might need to move this one block further away. I didn't consider that. Yeah. Okay, so that is one, one thing that we need to solve. But I'm pretty sure this is working the way we want it to be working. Um, and then also above this whole setup, we have an open crate that we can pipe items into through this interface. Yeah, the interface is talking to a phantom face. I renamed this to Atomic Reconstructor so we can see that on our thing. So basically we can say like, I don't know, 64 rubies equals 64 the row, whatever the name of the block is, 64 paradot equals 64 of uh, the other thing. So yeah, we can do it that way. Well, dang, that kind of stinks that this doesn't work the way I thought it was gonna work. Uh, yeah, I think we need to move our atomic reconstructor back one block. Okay, well, we got it hooked up, and it looks a little cleaner. Uh, I did end up putting some mana glass right here instead of using the chisel blocks. I didn't really like that, but I was trying to keep everything contained into one little block space. But yeah, it looks like this is going to work just fine. All right, so we can turn this thing off, so I'll stop doing the laser thing. So let's go try and set up a pattern here and see if we can get this to happen. Uh, so if we come over here and we do one of these, let's clear this all out. Uh, so we want to do Ruby equals uh, in the atomic reconstructor, one of these things. Okay. So that should work. And then we also want a uh, para, para uh, dot. We want this, the uses, in the atomic reconstructor to be one of those as well. So both of those should be what we want. Uh, atomic reconstructor. Okay. And then we also need to get ourselves a, some kind of an item collector, like an item collector that I did not make yet. Uh, let me go ahead and make that real quick and then we will do this. All right. The item collectors in place. We have the filter in place. So the next step is to see if we can get this thing to actually craft stuff. Uh, so let's try and craft, oh, I don't know, maybe like a hundred of these. So it needs to craft up some Peridot from the Essence, which is fine, and then to craft that. So we should be able to do some stuff here. So we drop that on there, it gets lasered, and the correct items get collected. Oh, but now we don't have a redstone pressure plate being held down. Ah, oh, there's always so many things that are getting us here, isn't there? All right, so one final change to this. Uh, we have surrounded everything in mana glass. We have two blocks of space where the laser comes out and then on top of the pressure plate. And then back here, I put an open blocks fan. Yep, so you can see I'm being pushed over this way. So if there's any items in there, they're gonna be pushed back onto that pressure plate. The glass keeps them from going further than the pressure plate, 
I think we're going to be all good here. So let's try one more thing. Let's try the row. Let's try doing a hundred of those. And we should be pretty well set here that everything should just work. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's taken a little bit of effort here to try and perfect this, but it looks like we are pretty much good to go. Now I might try increasing that from every two seconds to every one second. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way that is going. If we look in here, the auto craft is satisfied. So we are able to now auto craft both the Peridot and the Rubies into their atomic reconstructor things. So now if I want to do Wyvern and I say make me 32 of these, if we don't have stuff, it should be able to craft it. Everything should be good. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to go, but we are missing a Geo Blue Slime. I did forget about that one. Ah, well, guys, that's a pretty easy thing. I think we can fix that real quick. Um, let's get rid of this. This doesn't have to be here. So essentially what we need to do is tell the system to make a green slime block. We need to put a an interface. Okay. Mm so I'll make an interface. That interface needs to be back behind here. And that's going to say one... Uh, these green slime blocks equals nine of these and then we just need to extract all the blue slime out of here back into the interface that's a pretty simple thing um i'm not sure if we're going to leave it floating here or not but let's just try and get this thing set up now so we can at least try and make sure this works um so we need we need a couple of patterns here so green slime how about slime Okay, so we don't have a recipe for these. So we need to make a slime block recipe. So that is these guys makes a slime block. All right, so we'll have that recipe. And then we need to make one that's going to say one of these equals nine of these. Okay, that's going to go into our interface. And then we need another recipe that says four of these equals one of those. Okay, so both of these need to go into our applied energistic system. Just find a spot for them somewhere. Right there and there should be fine. Okay, and then the other one needs to go into this interface down here. Like so. Uh, and then we need some way to extract out of here and then we have to connect this up to applied energistics. But I did notice that we had enough blue slime that we should be able to do this now without having to get this thing fully hooked up. I'm going to move that to a better spot. I don't think I'm going to leave it there floating. Do we have everything now? So yeah, now that we have a way to turn the slime balls into the congealed blue slime, it looks like everything is set to go. So we can craft up everything. It's doing the paradox. It's going to be doing the other ones. Oh yeah. So that is really good. All the auto crafting is now happening. We can make ourselves all sorts of this stuff. Yeah, that's really awesome. I like it. Cool. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here for today. Again, I'm going to move these things to a better location. Actually get our pink slime thing hooked up. We have a way to make the green slime balls. So that's not a problem. Yeah, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.